If you're building a new PC, should you buy an Intel 14700K or the newly released AMD Ryzen 9900X? In this video, we are going to find out. My name is Matt, I'm a former rocket scientist, and my goal is to help you make the right component choices and put them together the right way every single time. In the UPC FC series, we've been helping you make the right choice by pitting two components against each other in the PC octagon to see who wins. In this video, our focus will be on two top CPUs with the newly released Ryzen 9 9900X in the red corner, taking on the Intel Core i7 14700K in the blue corner. In addition to showing you benchmarks across 18 games, I will also review the recent issues with Intel Raptor Lake processors, as well as the negative day one reviews for the AMD 9000 series launch. And if you stick around, I will share with you my pro tips for how to unleash the performance locked inside the new 9900X, something you will definitely not want to miss. It's really not rocket science, so before the main event gets started, let's jump straight into the recent drama surrounding these CPUs. It's challenging to make a CPU purchasing decision at the best of times, but when there's a lot of negative press, it can be even more confusing to make the right choice. So I thought it would be helpful to briefly summarize the recent drama, provide a current update, and give you my opinion as to whether this is something you should be concerned about as you consider your next CPU purchase. Intel's 13th and 14th generation desktop processors, also known as Raptor Lake, have been experiencing higher than usual failure rates due primarily to a microcode bug that causes the processor to receive too much voltage. This issue can affect any 13th or 14th generation desktop processor that consumes 65 watts or more of power. Compounding the issue further is that motherboard manufacturers, in an effort to boost performance, disabled multiple thermal and power protection mechanisms in the BIOS, allowing unlocked Intel CPUs to run at higher voltages and higher frequencies for longer periods of time. So how did Intel respond? In addition to agreeing to extend warranty coverage, Intel released three mitigations related to the instability issue to help stabilize impact impacted Raptor Lake processors. One, Intel default settings to avoid elevated power delivery to the processor. Two, microcode 125 to fix the ETVB issue in i9 processors. And three, microcode 129 to address the elevated voltages. These mitigations are all available through BIOS updates from motherboard manufacturers. However, the latest microcode update won't repair processors that are already experiencing crashes. The problem is that chips will eventually degrade if exposed to higher voltages for an extended period of time. This damage is unfortunately permanent and cannot be repaired. As of August 2024, there is currently no fix for an Intel CPU that's crashing due to degradation. You simply need to exchange it. So that's what the extended two-year warranty is designed to cover. Intel recently announced that the company has plans to roll out another firmware update by the end of September. This update will hopefully resolve the issues for the impacted processors once and for all if we're lucky. Saying that the launch of the new AMD Ryzen 9000 series chips did not go well is a huge understatement. If you looked at most of the day one reviews, you would walk away thinking that these chips were simply not worth buying. Virtually all of the larger well-known tech YouTubers were aligned. The 9000 series launch was a huge disappointment, especially in gaming. Shortly after the initial wave of negative reviews, AMD responded with a blog post. In this post, they addressed the lack of gaming performance with two relevant updates. The first was to address why AMD generated gaming data differed from reviewer data. This consisted of several factors including testing different games, using DDR5 6000 for Intel PCs, testing with VBS on in Windows, and using a later version of a branch prediction optimization algorithm not found in current versions of Windows. The second and perhaps more interesting update was to explain how users could extract max performance from the chips. This focused on using the optimized AMD specific branch prediction algorithm available in the preview version of Windows 11 24 H2. They even provided a table showing a sample of what to expect for a 9950X. Unfortunately, as I discussed in detail in my recent 9700X video, the actual performance boost from this newer version of Windows was only around 3% on average versus the 10% originally claimed, due primarily to an issue with memory integrity being turned off by default. The good news for AMD CPU owners is that you can now download these improvements with an optional update for Windows 11 version 23H2, so there's no longer a need to download the preview version of 24H2. So what should you do? If you decide to purchase a 14700K, make sure that you download the latest BIOS from your motherboard manufacturer and run the Intel default settings. When the new microcode update is released by Intel later this month, make sure that you immediately download and install the latest BIOS. Hopefully this will finally resolve the issue. If however you decide to purchase a 9900X, make sure you download the latest update for Windows 11 23H2 that includes the optimized branch prediction algorithm, which will provide a small boost in performance. If you want to learn how to extract even more performance from each CPU, then stick around until after 
to the main event to watch my step-by-step -step optimization guide. As mentioned earlier, the battle today is between two top CPUs, with the newly released Ryzen 9 9900X in the red corner, taking on the Intel Core i7-14700K in the blue corner. The test systems being used to run the benchmarks are my AMD and Intel open bench tables with the following components. For the AMD test platform, for the motherboard, we have a Gigabyte X670E Aorus Master. For the RAM, we have G-Skill Trident Z5 Neo RGB 32GB of DDR5-6400 at CL32. For the GPU, we have an ASUS ROG Strix GeForce RTX 4090 OC Edition. For the CPU cooler, we have an EVGA CLCX 360mm AIO. For storage, we have a 2TB SK Hynix Platinum P41 NVMe Gen 4 M.2 SSD. And for the PSU, we have a Gigabyte GP AP 1200PM 1200W Platinum Power Supply. For the Intel test platform, for the motherboard, we have an ASUS ROG Strix Z790E Gaming Wi-Fi 2. For RAM, we have Team T-Force Delta RGB 32GB of DDR5-7200 at CL34. For the GPU, we have an ASUS ROG Strix GeForce RTX 4090 OC Edition. For the CPU cooler, we have an ASUS ROG Ryzen 2 360mm AIO. For storage, we have a 2TB SK Hynix Platinum P41 NVMe Gen 4 M.2 SSD. And for the PSU, we have an EVGA Supernova 1200P2 1200W Platinum Power Supply. Affiliate links for all of these components are listed in the description below. All testing was performed with the RTX 4090 at default clocks. The memory for the 9900X was set to Expo, while the memory for the 14700K was set to XMP. To remove bias from the benchmarks, it's important to test both systems at their optimum memory conditions. For the Ryzen 9 9900X, this means testing at 6400 mega transfers per second, the highest memory speed that AMD AM5 chips can run, while still maintaining a unified memory controller clock frequency equal to the memory clock frequency. For Intel LGA 1700, performance increases with memory speed, however, Memory stability becomes an issue at higher speeds, especially with 4 DIMM motherboards, and is highly dependent on the quality of the CPU Integrated Memory Controller, or IMC. So to avoid producing results that only a handful of lucky users will be able to achieve, I selected a memory speed of 7200 mega transfers per second for the 14700K. I also applied a number of performance enhancing tweaks to each CPU, which will be covered in more detail later in the video. In order to thoroughly test the CPUs, I ran the benchmarks at different game settings in addition to different resolutions. To place maximum load on each CPU, I tested at 1080p with low settings, which should allow me to extract max performance from each chip. To create a more balanced CPU-GPU load, I tested at 1440p with medium settings. And to see if each CPU had an impact on GPU performance, I tested at 4K with ultra settings. These resolution setting combinations align well with typical gamer selections, with 1440p medium settings reflecting what most online first-person shooter gamers would likely use to achieve maximum frame rates, whereas 4K ultra settings reflect what most single-player gamers would do with a high-end CPU-GPU combination to extract maximum quality. With the CPUs set up and ready to go, let's check the benchmarks. But before we do, I think it's only appropriate to introduce this the right way. Over to you, Bruce. And now, it's time! Introducing the components fighting for Blackbird PC Tech Benchmark Supremacy! In the blue corner, we have the Champion! In the red corner, we have the Challenger! Who will win this battle royale? Stay tuned to find out!
As you can see from the benchmarks, the 9900X performed extremely well relative to a 14700K. So the question that I'm sure many of you are asking is, how do you unlock this performance? As with my previous video on the 9700X, there are a few important BIOS tweaks that you will need to make in order to unlock the true potential of the 9900X. The first is to use a higher speed kit of 6400 mega transfer per second RAM with Expo enabled. The 6400G skill kit that I purchased was rated at CL32. However, I was able to dial in tighter memory timings to match the 6000 kit and still maintain stability. To check if your memory is stable, I highly recommend downloading a tool called Kahoo RAM Test and running it for about 30 minutes. If you don't get any errors, then your system should be stable. I'll place a download link for Kahoo in the video description below. The second is to enable an all-core undervolt using the Curve Optimizer option in BIOS. I explain how to do this in detail in my recent all AMD upgrade video, but most of these tweaks can be found under AMD overclocking and then precision boost overdrive. The third is to expand the default power limit, which by default sets a TDP to 120 watts. You can do this multiple ways, but an easy way to do this on the Gigabyte X670E Aorus Master is to change the PBO limits option to motherboard, which significantly increases the power limits over default values. The only issue with doing this is that your CPU package temps will routinely go above 90 degrees Celsius if you run a benchmark like Cinebench. So in order to keep your temperatures in check, I recommend adding a platform thermal throttle limit of around 80 degrees Celsius. This will reduce your performance, but it will help prevent excessive and potentially damaging sustained boost behavior from occurring. The fourth tweak that I made was to increase the Infinity Fabric frequency. I was able to run 2133 MHz stable, which is an increase of approximately 133 MHz over stock settings. Based on my limited testing, I found that the newer 9000 series chips appear to be much more capable of running higher Infinity Fabric frequencies versus their 7000 series cousin, which if true is a very positive step forward for AMD. The fifth and final tweak was to optimize the memory sub timings. You can watch someone like Buildzoid on actually hardcore overclocking to learn how to do this manually, but most motherboards now come with automatic memory overclocking options that usually do a decent job. For the Gigabyte X670E Aorus Master that I'm using, there is an option called XMP Expo High Bandwidth Support that when enables tightens the memory sub timings beyond XMP Expo. In addition, a bonus sub timing tweak that helps boost performance and reduce system latency is to increase the T-Ref or DRAM refresh interval to 65535. This will work on any CPU and is a common tweak used by pros to help extract max performance from a system. Once you are done tweaking your system, I would highly recommend running a CPU intensive benchmark like Cinebench and letting Kahoo run for 24 hours just to make sure your system is fully stable. So in summary, the BIOS tweaks that I recommend making to extract max performance from your 9900X are 1. Install a high speed memory kit with Expo turned on. 2. Undervolt the CPU using a negative all core curve offset. 3. Increase the CPU power limits and set a thermal limit. 4. Increase the infinity fabric frequency. And 5. Tighten your memory sub timings. The impact of these tweaks on performance is significant and is summarized in this table. I used Cinebench R24 Multicore as the benchmark and I turned on each tweak separately so I could show its impact on performance, starting with the smallest and ending in the largest. When implemented together, the boost in performance is over 11% while maintaining a CPU package temp of around 81 degrees Celsius, which is impressive. A couple of points to note. The Infinity Fabric increase didn't have a large standalone increase in performance, however it did help with system stability, and the T-Ref change improved the system latency in addition to boosting performance. If you saw my 9700X guide, you may have noticed that I didn't change the max CPU boost clock for the 9900X. The reason is that I simply couldn't get the system stable with any increase that I tried. This is likely due to the fact that the 9900X has two CCDs, and one will always clock higher than the other, so I could have tried increasing the boost clock for only one CCD, but I felt this was too complex for this guide. For the 14700K, I used Intel default settings with DDR5-7200 memory. Most of the performance uplift for the 14700K was generated by simply using fast memory, which gave a 3% uplift over DDR5-6000. I also ran the XMP tweaked profile, which tightens the memory sub timings, as well as running a DRAM refresh interval of 65535, as discussed earlier. I typically would have tweaked the system further, however, given the recent instability issues, I wasn't really comfortable pushing the chip outside of the Intel defined limits. Furthermore, I had to increase the DRAM VDD and VDD QG voltages from 1.4 to 1.41 volts to get the system stable, which is why it's important to run Kahoo after performing any memory tweaks. One important point to emphasize is that the performance boost that you are able to achieve will depend heavily on silicon quality. There is no guarantee that your CPU will be stable with these tweaks. That said, I chose not to push each chip further to make sure that this tweak guide will be applicable to as many viewers as possible. If you find that your 9900X is not stable after making these tweaks, 
then I would recommend backing off on the tweaks that have a smaller impact on performance first, such as the infinity fabric frequency and PBO limits. Hopefully this guide will help you extract max performance from your CPU. In this video, we pitted two top CPUs against each other in the PC Octagon to see who will emerge victorious. The newly released Ryzen 9 9900X in the red corner, taking on the Intel Core i7 14700K in the blue corner. The round by round results show a decisive victory for the 9900X over the 14700K with 12 wins, four losses and two draws across 18 hard fought rounds. When you look at the performance across 17 games, the average FPS is actually quite close. However, However, the 9900X offers an increase in 1% lows of over 25% at every resolution, which is significant. This is an interesting result and suggests that the 9900X will offer a much higher quality gaming experience. Furthermore, the 9900X also shows a meaningful advantage in professional workloads such as Blender. When you now take a look at power efficiency, this performance advantage is extended further, with the 9900X showing just how efficient it is over the 14700K. Hopefully, the new Core Ultra processors will yield a much needed improvement in efficiency for Intel. Given that performance heavily favors the 9900X, what happens when we look at cost? When you add the cost of the CPU and RAM together, the 14700K 7200 combo is actually around $70 cheaper or approximately 12% less than the 9900X 6400 combo at the time of filming this video. If you now convert that into gaming value or FPS per dollar at 1080p, then you get a somewhat mixed result, with the 14700K offering better value for average FPS, while the 9900X offers better value with respect to 1% lows. It seems that the tables have now been turned, with Intel being forced to lower the price of their higher end processors, and it's fantastic to see this level of price to performance, even if it was driven by problems at Intel. With that said, if you already own a 14700K, I wouldn't upgrade to a 9900X, but I would rush to upgrade your BIOS. However, if you're building a new system, I would, based on these results, strongly recommend the 9900X over the 14700K. The 9900X offers a significant increase in 1% lows, something every gamer will notice, and offers superior performance in professional workloads, all at a much lower power and temperature. Furthermore, as a result of the flawed reviews from channels like Hardware Unbox, the 9000 series is not selling well, so our price cut has just been announced, which would enhance their value even further. It is truly an outstanding chip, something many reviewers still fail to understand or appreciate. AMD ticks all of the boxes with the 9900X, which means the pressure is now on Intel to deliver with its new Core Ultra processors, if it hopes to take back the performance crown anytime soon. Remember, it's not rocket science, it's Lego. My goal is to help you make the right component choices and put them together the right way every single time. Thank you for watching this video in the Ultimate PC Component Fighting Championship Battle Series. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit the like button and subscribe so you don't miss out on future episodes as other components battle it out in the PC Octagon. And if you would like to support the channel further, please also consider joining our new membership program, which I'm super excited about. Bye for now.